So we get a lot of questions here on the channel about switching banks and specifically people want to know what's an account that I can open just so I can switch it away because you might want to keep your existing account. There might be reasons why you can't switch your existing account. So you need an extra one that you can use to switch to get those switching bonuses. So this video, I'm going to take you through some of the things you might need to think about when considering what account to apply for and also take you through some of those best options, some of the easiest ones to get, are the ones where you're going to miss out on the least things by doing it. So first of all, let's talk about maybe some reasons why you might not want to switch your existing account. You might only have a single account. That might be the only one that you've got. And generally, I would say to people, you know, you want more than one bank account. So if you switch your existing account to another account, you still only got one current account. And a lot of the extra features you can get from other banks, you don't need to switch to get them. You can just open up additional accounts. So if you're thinking, oh, I want to get this monthly reward over here, or I want to get the interest in this account over here, you don't necessarily need to switch to get those offers. You can just open a new account, okay? You don't have to switch. And that means you're now suddenly got two accounts. Then maybe you might want to consider switching the other account you've got for the cash switching bonuses. But certainly think, don't just keep switching that single account every time. Also, if you've had only one account your entire life, you know, or for a long time, you've never really switched before, then there could be a downside of switching that existing account because one of the kind of the big kind of strong single signals on your credit report is longevity, how long you've had an account for. And often this is averaged out across lots of different accounts and things, and not just your current account, you've got your credit cards, maybe, maybe your mobile phone provider, whoever it might be. But if you've had your current account since you were, let's say, 18, and now you're in your you know, late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s even, then that is a big, big change from your credit report. Now, it's not going to be the end of the world. And obviously, your new account will start building up year after year after that, as long as you don't keep switching it as well. Um, but I would certainly say, if you're worried about that, again, it's not a good idea to switch that one away. Again, you can open up a new account, these dummy accounts that we get to, and switch that one instead. Keep that account there. Even if you don't use it, having it is a good signal on your credit report. You might obviously also like your bank. Like my main current account is Starling. I really like Starling. If I was to switch that to a different bank, I would be missing out on a lot of the features. Although other banks have got some decent options, I'd be missing out there and I would have a, a lesser experience, banking experience, and things would be more difficult. So I don't want to get rid of that account. And you might just generally like the account that you've got. You might even have a branch near you and you should use the branch. So you want to go in there. Again, another reason not to do it. And of course, you know, not only do you like your bank or might have multiple accounts like I do, like I'm sure many of you do, you might be getting some decent rewards with those. If you switch away, you're going to lose them. Uh, Halifax Rewards will give you £5 a month. Uh, Santander123 will give you cash back on your bills. You might get a high paying interest from Virgin Money or NatWest or First Direct. Again, if you move away from those banks, you'll lose those features. So again, you don't want to switch away from them. You want to, to keep them. Uh, and there's one other thing worth thinking about here is you might not be able, literally might not be able to switch your account. There are a couple of factors here. One, the bank isn't part of something called the Current Account Switching Service. Uh, and there are over 40 banks and building societies in the UK. So the vast majority of your one current accounts you might have will be part of this, but there are a handful that aren't. And right now, the big one is probably Chase Bank, but also Revolut and Moneys, which although technically aren't for banks, a lot of you might have them and use them as banks. They are not part of that switching service, so you cannot switch away from them as part of the switching service. And that is always something that is required for those switching bonuses, those £100, 150 quid, whatever it might be. They require you to use that service and close the account behind it. Well, those banks aren't part of it, so you can't. And similarly, if you've got some dead accounts, some dormant accounts you've not been using for years and you keep them for that express purpose of switching, there could be a kind of fly in the ointment as well because switches require a debit card number. And it may well be if you've had this account and not used it, the bank might not have renewed your debit card. And therefore, you won't have a valid debit card and you won't be able to use it for switching. So it's something to bear in mind that if that's happened, you can't use it to switch. You obviously, you could get in touch with the bank and request one. But if in the moment where you're going to switch, that might not be possible. So they're all reasons you might want to keep your account. All good reasons why you can't or won't switch an existing account, whether it's your only one you've got or one of many that you've got. So let's move on now to opening up a new account with the express purpose of as soon as it's open, or maybe shortly after opening it, you use that to switch to a different bank. And it is perfectly fine to do this. People say, how soon after opening an account can I switch away? Well, as long as you're not, it's not tied in, there were no terms and conditions when you signed up to that account, 
then you can switch almost straight away. Obviously, there will be an impact on your credit report uh, every time you open up a new current account. And I mentioned before about closing long held ones can have an impact. So they might be wise to spread things out a little bit, not cram too many of these new applications for accounts to then switch to another new one, which will also be an application together. But if you don't have anything major going on, if your credit report and your credit score are pretty strong, then it's less of a concern. But you need to have that be aware of the fact that it will see your uh, score dip down and that may impact applications you make elsewhere. So certainly avoid doing too much of this in a short space of time and maybe avoid doing it for six months like any kind of new application if you've got a mortgage on the horizon, either a remortgaging or a new application. So with these dummy accounts, these accounts that you are going to open and then switch away, there are a couple of things you might want to consider. Before we get into the kind of the accounts I think fit into this, but some things to consider. They're not necessarily going to rule you out of using them, but they're just worth thinking about. First one, does the account have an on, any ongoing decent benefits? Okay, if so, you're not necessarily going to want to open it and then ditch it straight away because you're going to miss out on some of those things that you might have been able to get. Does the bank ever run switching deals themselves? Sometimes the banks will rule you out of a switching offer in the future if you've had an account with them since a certain date. Sometimes they don't. And it's hit and miss between the two. But I certainly, and the rules obviously can change at any time, but I certainly would be wary of opening an account with a bank where historically they prevented you getting a switching bonus if you've had an account in the last few years or even ever. So that's something to, to think about there. Uh, does the bank require a hard credit check? We'll go into this in a moment. Again, worth bearing in mind as I talked about in the impact on your credit score. Do you think you might want to use that bank in the future? You know, whether it's for whatever reason, you might think, oh, I don't want it right now, but maybe I'll use it later on there can be restrictions on reapplying for accounts or they might go, hang on, if someone keeps coming back to this, well, what's going on here? They might not let you have that account. So have that in the back of your mind. And also, have you already used the bank as a dummy account in the past? Again, linked into that last one, they might be thinking, why does this person keep opening accounts and then leaving us, opening accounts and leaving us? And that could have some issues. So let's talk about the different types of dummy accounts and the actual banks I think you can look at in this, in this situation. The first ones, and possibly the easiest ones to get, but not necessarily the best ones to get, are the ones that do uh, soft check only, the soft check current accounts. This basically means they will not perform a hard check on your credit report, which means you're not going to have that impact on your on there for impacting future applications. Obviously, the other switch, the other application you do for the account you switch to, that will, but these are soft check accounts. The two main ones here are Starling and Monzo. Uh, as long as you don't apply for an overdraft with them, there is a soft check. Uh, the other benefit of these accounts is that you get your debit card, your virtual debit card straight away. So you could, in theory, start that application the same day, that switch application to a different bank and put those details in, even before you get the physical card in the post. Uh, again, bear in mind here, uh, Starling won't let you go back for a year after leaving them. Monzo, it's around a month. But again, they are very, very hot on this idea of people using them as kind of these burner dummy accounts and just doing it again and again. So they will flag it and they won't let you have the accounts any get anymore. Um, you could also get a basic bank account potentially from somewhere, which that also won't do a hard credit check. But these ones, often the bank will only give them to you if you're not eligible for one of their main accounts. So again, I think you can have a look at these, but again, probably not worth considering. Also, a lot of the banks that will give you a basic account, there might be other features you want or switching bonuses available from their main accounts further along the road. So you might be ruling yourself out by having a basic account with them, even if you switch away straight away. So these quick ones, Monzo and Starling, however, I said these are both great accounts, both decent accounts. Uh, you don't necessarily need both of them, maybe one or the other. This might be a one-time thing. You get one and you switch away, maybe the other one you just open it and you keep it. The next one is the extra account with your existing bank. Not all banks will let you do this, but many will let you add on an extra account. And this can be quite fast because you're already a customer. Not only is that application maybe short, you know, a, a bit faster, but also all the extra bits are quicker. You're not having to wait for any extra code to set up online banking. You're not having to wait for anything to come in the post. You might be able to just have all those details available to you straight away. Not many of the, these kind of main banks that we talk about will have the card details in the app, but some of them do. So again, you might be able to quickly see what your card details are and start to switch with that additional account. Now, I've had this in the past. In fact, often when I'm switching now, it is these extra accounts that I've got for different reasons. I haven't expressly opened them with the purpose of switching them, but I've had them through other kind of deals. So I've you know often switched like an extra Santander or an extra TSB or an extra Nationwide, use those ones to switch away. And this is great as well because it means that I get to keep a relationship with that bank. I still have an account with them and any extra features that might come with them often 
through Santander, for example, I've still got my one, two, three light account giving cash back, but I switched away just a standard classic account. There was nothing special about that account. I just had it there and I've switched that one away most recently. So that's definitely a, a nice option to go for as well. Not every bank will let you do this, uh, but it's definitely worth thinking about. Now, if you want to get something, this is the next one. This is the account with some freebies. There aren't many of these, but there are some accounts where you might be able to get something from them, not a switching bonus, but some other kind of bonus. And then once you've got that, then using it to switch away. So this might not be an immediate one. It might not be one that you can get and then within a few days, a few weeks, then use it to switch to a big cash bonus. You might have to wait a bit of time. But again, you're getting something for nothing here effectively. One to consider here, and again, I'm making no promises, but just based historically how it's worked is the Club Lloyds account. Now this one comes with, I did a video re review on it very recently. It comes with a choice of uh, six cinema tickets a year, a magazine subscription, 12 movie rentals, or an annual Gourmet Society membership. Now those cinema tickets are issued upfront right at the start of the year when you join. Once you've got those, they're not gonna cancel them or ask for them back. You've got them, they're yours. So you could then switch away. Likewise, years ago when I did this, I got the magazine subscription and it carried on for the full year, even though I didn't have a Club Lloyds account for the full year. Again, this could change, so I can't promise anything, but it's a good indication based on my experiences in the past and what you guys have told me, you can open this account, get the freebie, and then switch away. And also, again, based on previous switching offers from Lloyds, there's no guarantee this will carry on in the future, but they have let existing customers switch into that account and get a cash bonus as long as you've not had the cash by a certain date, you know, after a certain date. So that means you could open this account now, you could get the freebie, you could switch, use it to switch to a different account, and then if they come later on, a switching deal is on offer, well, you could open up a new account with them and get the switching bonus from them and maybe get another freebie as well. So that's a good one to consider. Again, can't promise things can change. So you want to weigh up whether it's worth taking that risk that you lose out on the annual freebie and on a switching bonus in the future, but I hope not. Another one is the TSB Spend and Save account. And this isn't, it's paying a lot less than it used to, but this is going via a cashback site used to be via Quidco, right now it's with Top Cashback. That could change in the future, so if it's not on one of them, check the other one, see what's there. Used to offer uh, 30 to 60 pounds cashback, depending on the kind of the time they move the offer up and down. Right now it's 20 pounds cashback, which is better than nothing, um, but you do have to jump through a few hoops to get it. You have to uh, make a certain number of transactions uh, in a month and do a certain number of bits and pieces, put, pay some money in over a first you know, few months. And if you do that, you get then get that cash back from the cash back site. This is separate cash back to the stuff that is offered by the TSB Spend and Save account. And I think that's a bit of a faff and not necessarily worth it. But if you've got the account, you might want to, to do that as well. But again, once you've got that cash back from the cash back site, uh, then you can use it and switch it away to a different bank. Uh, the other one, and I'm kind of loath to tell you about this one here, but it is worth just for completion. Uh, Triodos, which is an ethical bank. I have got a whole video review on it, looking at how that one works. New joiners, not switchers, new joiners can get a £60 voucher to spend at Ethical Superstore or Neil's Yard. So potentially once you've got that, you could uh, then use that to switch away to a different bank. But I personally wouldn't recommend it. This is an ethical bank. Uh, it's not, I think, an ethical thing to do, just to open that account with the express purpose of switching away. The, the next lot, the last lot of uh, accounts you might want to consider in order uh, for a dummy account are the accounts that rarely offer anything. They're not really that exciting. So if you've got an account with them right now, you're not really missing out on anything as an ongoing bonus or potentially a switching bonus in the future. Obviously, this can change and banks do come up with offers out of nowhere and change their proposition. So there is a risk you can rule yourself out of, of some of these. Um, but at the moment, you know, Barclays they offer nothing, nothing of any worth to anyone. They last ran a switching bonus in 2019. The blue rewards are worth literally zero every single month. You can open an account with them and switch away. You've not missed out. Of course, they may change that. In fact, they're probably one of the most likely banks to change that and maybe do some sort of offer in the future. But again, if you're not worried about that, that's one to go for. Uh, Cooperative Bank, that does offer right now a 50 pound refer a friend switching bonus, but you've got to know someone with a co-op account to get that. Um, if you do, fantastic. If you don't, you might think, you know what, I'm just going to get a cooperative bank account and switch away. I'm not worried about that. And similarly, Metro Bank, uh, again, they have last ran a £50 referral friend switch deal in 2020. Nothing in the last 18 months. Not something they ever did before that. I can't imagine, you know, maybe, maybe they'll bring something back. But again, their current account, same with the cooperative current account, there's nothing special from having it. They're a 
nothing extra going on there. So you're not missing out particularly. Now, finally, I just want to end here quickly on uh, the accounts to keep and ditch after switching. Because once you've got this dummy account and you've used it to switch to get a switching bonus from uh, one of these banks, fantastic, quids in, you could then keep using it to switch for another deal and switch for another deal, you know, and get, you know, three or four, maybe five of these switching deals in a year. And that is perfectly fine. But there is a risk then that you miss out on some of those good ongoing offers that are available. So although right now Halifax doesn't have a switching deal, when it does, it's a great opportunity to get that switching cash and then also get the ongoing monthly reward from them. So switching away means you miss out on potentially 60 quid a year. Uh, the Santander 123 Lite account, again, they haven't got a switching deal right now, but if they bring it back, great opportunity to switch into it and then pay all your bills out of it and get you know, 40 to 70 quid a year. In fact, with bills getting higher and higher, you might actually be even more than you make back from that every year. Again, switching away means you would miss out on it. Uh, NatWest or RBS rewards accounts, again, they have not such great rewards, 36 pounds a year, better than nothing, but they do have that linked regular saver, uh, which is worth 3.3% uh, interest on the first 1,000 pounds you have saved. It'll take you about eight and a half months to get there. Again, that could be worth a nice lot of extra cash as well. Switch away means you miss out on those. And the Virgin Money M Plus current account, that is currently the highest paying savings account. To get it, you need a Virgin current account. Again, switching away means you will miss out. So again, I would stick with those ones. However, HSBC Advance or First Direct, Probably just use those, switch again, switch again. First Direct does have a decent regular saver right now at the time of recording. But again, not one. Get the money, switch to the next one potentially. Nationwide, again, has been a really good current account in the past. Not too special right now, but a decent switch and deal. You could get that money and switch away once more. And that Club Lloyds we spoke about as well. If you are able to keep the, uh, the ongoing lifestyle reward for a year, then get that money and then switch away. And there is a switching bonus at the time of recording for them as well. There you go, lots to take in. I'm sure I'll get more information over at BeCleverWithYourCash.com, including the details of all the latest switching deals. So you make sure you know what ones are gonna make you the most money. Let me know what you've done in terms of dummy accounts and accounts you've switched in the comments below. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Here are some more videos all about banking.